So this is just like a general overview of sort of process of electrophoresis and what it's used for. So the whole point of electrophoresis is to um, separate bits of DNA. So I've got my um, my DNA here. Say we wanted to sequence an organism's genome, or we wanted to, you know, find out find a certain gene within this uh, bit of DNA. So we get uh, these enzymes called restriction enzymes, which are like how people say molecular scissors. And I'll do another video about them because they're quite cool. But they basically cut the DNA at specific sites and cut it at different lengths. So now we have, um, well, we'll have like a test tube or something like that with all our little bits of DNA in. And we can't see these, obviously, and we want to separate them out somehow. So here I've got my electrophoresis gel. So that's agarose gel normally, which is like a sort of sugar thing. Uh, inside a sort of box and I'd pour my buffer solution in to keep things dissolved and and then I'd add my DNA sort of solution to these wells. Now you'd have more than one well because you'd maybe sequence uh, looking at comparing things. We're now looking down on our gel and do you remember that DNA has all these phosphoryl groups on it and they are basically they're acidic so they lose the protons and you end up with DNA being negatively charged. So when you put it inside your electrophoresis gel, you want to put it at the negative end, and then as you let your gel run, as you apply a current, all your fragments will move to the positive end. The gel's got pores in, and you think if you have a pore about this big, this one's going to fit through really easily, whereas this one, it's going to struggle, sort of get caught in it, stuff like that. But they all start, obviously, in the same place, and then you start your timer, and gradually, they'll all move. So after a certain amount of time they'll end up in bands by size. And obviously they won't look like that because inside your, your tiny sample of DNA that you put in you're gonna have thousands and thousands of each of these fragments. So they all sort of come up looking like a little like a little square block. But they are separated by size because the smallest ones can move through quickest. We put our DNA samples in here in one of the wells and then they're going to move towards the positive end migrate because the DNA is negatively charged like that so the DNA is moved along and you end up with bands in these stretches so these bits of DNA when we cut them up will just be the they were the smallest fragments that happened to get cut up and these ones were the longest ones and they took the longest time to go through so say this was um, these were two fathers possible fathers and this was the child that they're looking for this person has the most similar banding pattern to the child, so we'd say this guy's the father and this poor guy is um, being misled if he thinks he's the father. So that's like a paternity test. But obviously we can't see the DNA at this point because DNA is, well, it's colourless, we can't see it. So we have to find a way of sort of dyeing the DNA. So we can, what we tend to do is we do it on, um, we blot the DNA. So we get it onto another surface where it's fixed because if it stays in the gel, because there's a buffer solution, you know, it can sort of, um, once the char um, the current has been turned off, they might, it might diffuse, you know, it might, might, might change. But if we fix, a, fix the sort of the bits of DNA onto a certain material, then we can properly study it. So the way that this is done is called southern blotting. We put basically loads of paper, um, sort of, we put a nitrocellulose membrane or a nylon membrane over, over our DNA samples and then we put a load of absorbent paper on, squash it all down and then by capillary action all the sort of solution will go up. I forgot to mention before that you add alkali and that separates the double strands into single strands but then you, yeah, so you do that and then it all goes up and it gets stuck to the nylon membrane um, so you'd leave it overnight probably and then you uh, put UV light on the membrane and that fixes all the DNA to it and then you can identify it either by using probes or just a general DNA stain. So if we're using uh, uh, probes they are like specific to certain sites on the DNA and they will bind on so these sections of DNA will have the sequence A, B, not B, you don't get B, A, T, G, C probably repeated loads and loads of times. So if you have a probe which is specific for something similar to that sequence then it will bind on there. And if it's radioactively labelled with phosphorus 31 then you will be able to sort of put over x-ray paper and then you'll be able to tell where the bands are, wherever there's um, sort of radiation coming off then you know 
your DNA was there. The kind of, the probes that you use more now is fluorescently dyed ones and then you can just sort of observe them under UV light and they fluoresce. So that's electrophoresis. It's used for loads of stuff. So um, it's kind of central to all DNA technology. And it's used, for example, in DNA sequencing. So when you sort of cut up your, your genome, you need to separate the section, so you do it by electrophoresis. Uh, DNA fingerprinting, which is similar to this sort of paternity testing. Genetic diagnosis, you can use a probe specific to the allele that you're looking for, so maybe if you have cystic fibrosis, that's a recessive allele. So you can sort of probe for that, see if someone's a carrier, whether they've got the disease. Um, and then that sort of leads on to things like genetic counselling. And then the other thing is in research and engineering. So for example in engineering if you want to insert a gene into another organism or bacteria you need to find the gene within the, organis um, within the organism's DNA possibly so then you'd cut it up, separate it out, then you can find the gene which is specific to what you want, the protein that you want to create and then you can identify that using probes and then you can cut it out of your electrophoresis gel and you can like work with it, replicate it, PCR it. And then in research it's just very, you just, you just need it for separating DNA, maybe you're looking at the different ways that the relative amount of DNA that's transcribed in, in different types of cells or maybe you're just looking to compare different organisms or you're looking for specific disease sort of traits and disease or differences between people like there's so many different applications of electrophoresis it's like the central bit in all sort of DNA technology uh, yeah